In this video, we're going to quickly cover a number of different options of getting a 2D image into 3D environment in Vectorworks. Uh, the first way of doing it is just what's called a 2D planar image, which is basically just import an image and then line it up the way you want. So what we would do for that is, um, uh, first we'll take a look here. I have images used in this file in a number of different ways. So we'll go over to walkthrough and we'll take a little tour. So you can see over here, I have some TV screens and they're rendered. They actually have some special attributes to them that make them appear more like reflective and, and glow like a TV actually does. There's a few other objects down here that have images. Like you can see, this is a screenshot of an iPad taken. These are just covers of books and they have to be bent around objects. So obviously they use textures. And then we have another more common example here, which is a very simple 2D picture, but this is still a 3D object. This is what's known as an image prop, but we'll go over that second. So first we'll go ahead and delete this one and we'll replace this with a regular 2D image. So we'll go back to our view, we'll go to top plan, and I'm just gonna go ahead and import an image here. You can see it imports. Now, if I hold shift down, I can scale it symmetrically so I can get it down to the size I want. And if I go to a front view, I can rotate it up into place, align it properly. Side here and there. We generally have it where we want. I'm gonna make that maybe a little smaller. And in OpenGL, that works fine. There's no issue here. There's no issue, there's no problem whatsoever. I can see that in OpenGL and it appears fine. What I want to draw your attention to though is if you render this object, it will not always appear in a render works mode. So you can see it appears just fine here as a planar image in OpenGL. But if I render this in RenderWorks, you can see I have my transparencies and my IES lighting. I don't get that image. That's because a 2D planar image is not a real 3D object. It holds up generally fine in OpenGL, but in a lot of other rendering modes, especially ones that trace edges, it can break down and you can get an empty square or you can get nothing at all. The other method of doing that is what I had before. So we'll go ahead and undo a few steps back. Now, this is generally the easiest way of doing it. It's what's creating what's called an image prop. So what we'll do is we'll go to Model, Create Image Prop. And that's going to ask us for an actual image file to start with. I'll choose to import one. You can also use one from another texture or anything else, but we'll just import it to be simple on this one. We'll pick that same image we picked before. Go ahead and we'll leave this. Six feet tall is fine for now. You can see it imports, and you'll notice it's importing over here. It imports at the documents 00, zero. so if ever you lose it, that's where you can find it afterwards. We'll go to top plane view, we'll rotate it into place, we'll grab that, move it up against the wall. There we are. And you can see it looks a little strange. See how it's sort of embedding itself in the wall there? We'll get a little closer. And see, as I move, it sort of changes a little bit what it's doing. That's because by default, image props face the camera. They face the user all the time. You can turn that off by unchecking auto rotate so it won't face me anymore. The point that it would do that is if you had um, like trees or people in the background or in a window looking in or looking out, it would always make sure to face towards or away from the camera. That's what this is for. But if I just want an image to hang on a wall, I don't want that. I'll just leave auto rotate off. Now, if you were doing trees or some other sort of um, detail objects like that, you might also want to use crossed plane, but again, that's only if you're in the distance. You wouldn't use that right up next to it. Turning these two bottom options off, but leaving aspect ratio on will keep what you want here. And we'll check how close we got to this wall real quick. That's close enough for now. And then we'll see what that looks like in a rendered image. And here we are. This is what it looks like in OpenGL, and this is what it looks like in RenderWorks. Now you can see I got my nice shadow, I've got a drop, the light interacts with it, but it's a little too bright, and why is that? That's because by default, image props have a glow associated with them. They have a glow to their texture. So if I open up the resource manager, I'll see that I have an item in here, it'll be called untitled prop texture one, two, and three as you import them. I can edit this texture, and under reflectivity, by default, that'll show up as glow, and you can just turn that to none and then turn that off, and then it'll show up this way. So by default, it will show with a glow on, like you see on the left here, but if you don't want that effect, you can turn that off. Now the other option is to, we'll go back to the boardroom, and we'll check an example. The other option, which is the most steps, but is the most controllable, is uh, importing the image as a texture. And here we'll 
see the reasons we'd want to do that. So you can see down here, these are textures. These are texture-based objects. And not only do they show what's actually in, they're not just showing the image, they're reflective. And these in particular, they're also glowing slightly because this is supposed to emulate a television or a computer monitor screen. We'll edit the 3D component. We can zoom in here and we can see that this is an extrude. And under render, we can see there's a texture applied to it. So this is a computer screen. This was made as an image-based texture, which you can see in the RenderWorks Getting Started Guide. We'll leave the symbol, and then we'll take a look at why you would do that. So if you use an image as a texture, you can have a little more control over what it's going to look like. The first option is just the image. So just putting the image in as a texture, it looks fine, but it doesn't really interact with the environment properly. You can see that there's no shininess to the screen, and there's no light coming from the actual monitor itself. We move over here, we can now see I have turned reflection on, so you can see those cool lights reflecting, and you can see the IES light curves appearing in the reflection of the object. It's most obvious here. You can see the little light bulbs and reflecting from behind me, and you can see the chairs here. And then the other reason, if you give it a, a backlighting or you actually turn the glow back on, you can have it cast its own light. So it looks like we've turned the lights out in the room, but these television screens are still on. So we're still seeing these LCD displays and they're glowing and they're actually interacting and lighting up their environment slightly. So there's a number of different ways of doing this. These three are the most standard. And as you can see, the first one is the easiest, but doesn't always work. As you can see in the 2D planar images, it doesn't always work in RenderWorks. But if you're just doing OpenGL, then it's perfectly fine as long as you're never going to leave OpenGL. Using image props is the second easiest. Uh, you just have to be aware to turn off this glow if that's not the effect you're using, and you'll get a nice flat 2D image, perfect for hanging posters or just um, paintings on walls. It's a very quick way of doing that. And then images at textures has the most control to it, but it involves the most steps as you have to create the texture, apply it to the extrude, and then continue from there. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to visit kbase.vectorworks.net for more video tech tips and other technical articles. Thank you, and have a great day.